To Hunley, nothing beat being a wiener dog on a sunny day. It was so much more dignified than being a sweaty, tired-looking man. Back from the marathon already? <gasps> uh <-huh. laughs> and you want a trophy? 17th place? Congratulations! Steady now. Push that button. Uh, let's put it there, next to my cow pasture sprint trophy. <laughs> Trophies make it hard to forget things you've done because you have to keep cleaning them. I got that for climbing and mapping what they now call Yellow Hat Mountain. Uh, <laughs> You'll win trophies someday. Uh, a trophy is a reward for doing something well. So maybe best at being a good little monkey. <laughs> George figured there wasn't much chance of that, but maybe for something else, someday. Giorgio, Giorgio! Oh, say, you know, I I've got no help today. Uh, could you, uh... <laughs> All done! <laughs> Thank you so much. Grazie. <laughs> My new dessert, the ice cream gnocchi, for you, Giorgio. Consider it the Helpful Monkey Award. My thank you for a job well done. This plate of ice cream was Giorgio's first trophy. A trophy is a reward for doing something well. just mean to melt a guy's helpful monkey award. Giorgio, what did you do? Leave your ice cream gnocchi in the sun? <laughs> well, maybe I can still use it for something. Don't leave it in the sun where it'll melt. George now knew he had to keep his trophy out of the sun. Ice cream. <laughs> uh, just how big is this fish you're after, George? <laughs> well, you might as well be hunting for tadpoles. <laughs> there you go. Try this one. 
George knew nothing about water beetles, except that they couldn't help him find his tadpoles. Now, this was a strange creature. It looked like a tadpole, sort of. Swam like a tadpole, kind of. But it had legs, almost no tail. Not like a tadpole. George, my tadpoles aren't giving you any problems, are they? Oh! <laughs> Good. Bring them over sometime for a visit, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> George knew that someday he'd have to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. And he knew he might never see his little friends again. Back in the city, George tried to take his mind off the tadpoles. It wasn't easy. George couldn't believe it. That odd little creature was one of his tadpoles, and he let it go. <laughs> but George, we just visited the lake. We'll go back next month. Bill said the tadpoles would grow up in amazing ways. But how much would they grow in a whole month? And into what? George, we've been looking all over for you. You got like 800 pounds of boiled lettuce. <gasps> now George really had to get back to the lake. But it was weeks before he could go. <laughs> Luckily, George didn't see any signs of jumbo tadpoles. But he couldn't find his friends either. These loud frogs probably scared the tadpoles away. It was time for George to tell Bill he'd lost the tadpoles. Hey, George! <laughs> that was a good idea to release my tadpoles into their natural habitat. How'd you like watching them grow into frogs? Pretty neat, huh? Uh-huh. Just like my caterpillar changed into a butterfly. See? The tadpoles were right here all the time. They had just been, well, growing up. Smile, George! Before long, George thought the frogs were even more fun than the tadpoles. Well, most of the time. I'll be home later. Remember, no bothering the new neighbor who is not an elephant. <sighs> the new neighbor wasn't an elephant. He had an elephant. George felt very misunderstood. <gasps> Why, the elephant must have gone out too. Well, that thing would never fit inside the apartment. <laughs> huh? 
Could there be a chainsaw in Mabel's? <laughs> so many things made similar sounds. How could George figure out what he'd been hearing upstairs? For George to be certain, he had to go right to the source. That sort of sounded like his neighbor, but not really. The man with the yellow hat was right. George hadn't heard an elephant. But then, what had he heard? That was the sound. <laughs> so the upstairs neighbor has a Galapagos tortoise that's been wrapping gifts and making juice. George, I'm going to say this one more time. There is no way... Yes? Hi there. We're your downstairs neighbors, and... Oh, so nice to meet you. <sighs> George! <laughs> What's he doing? I think he's looking for your... Uh, elephant. My what? <laughs> oh, we heard some loud sounds. Um, very loud sounds. Very loud Oh, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes I get carried away working on my art. Art? I am an artist. I do murals. I mix my paint here. Then I use these rubber stamps I made. <laughs> Here's one of my completed works. We also heard something like a bag of rocks dropping. Do you use rocks in your work? No. Uh, oh, that was a bag of groceries. It fell off the counter. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. What on earth is that? Sounds like an elephant finger painting. Huh? It does. George thought he'd probably need better bait, too. Well, first he'd need bait. George had been eating a carrot when he saw the eel. Maybe eels like carrots, too. Or other favorite monkey foods. Unless George could figure out what an eel ate, Bill was going to take it home for sure. 
if he moved fast, George could get that eel's picture. Place this hook. I'll be right back. You're not going to have time to beat me. Here was George's chance to get the eel first, so Bill couldn't take it home. The eel was out of reach, and George was out of breath. <laughs> this looked bad. Soon, Bill would be back with his new hook. <laughs> A hook was just what George needed. he could get the water to sit still. didn't want Bill to get the eel, but he didn't want the eel to remain trapped either. George, this is what happens when you don't use the proper fishing gear. Oh! Oh! It's just an old cage. <laughs> George, we have to help that eel get back to its home where it belongs. Mm? Well, that's why I wanted to catch it, to take it home to the ocean. Mm. <sighs> Being a city kid, you don't know this, but eels travel from fresh water to the ocean to spawn. Bon voyage, Mr. Eel! That's the proper way to say goodbye to someone headed out on the ocean. All the fishermen came back with tales that day. Mr. Quint's tale of how he freed a whale. And George's tale of how he and Bill freed that eel. <laughs> <laughs> it was a special day for George, a visit to the museum, but first, a stop at Piscetti's for a sweet Sunday treat. <laughs> George, they're not going anywhere. Cannoli, a brown, crunchy shell with a delicious filling. See? Two, just for us. Ooh. 
Hey, Noki. You have your own house now? looking for cannoli. The last two got taken. <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't make any new cannoli today. I'm too upset. What's going on? <sighs> Mio caro gnocchi. She has been sneaking into the main room and scratching up at the seats. It's a disaster. You see? Look what she has done. Can you believe a little gato, a sweet little kitty, could do such damage? I must ban gnocchi from the restaurant. Oh, well, we saw the house you built her. It's very nice. Grazie! I plan to add a second story, eh? Oh, that is gnocchi. She wants to come in. Oh, I feel terrible. She only wants to come in because you say she cannot. Oh, typical cat. This kitchen is in torment. I suspect there will be no cannoli until this problem is solved. Eh? Back outside. Oh, don't worry, George. I I'm sure they'll solve the problem. <laughs> At the museum, George was too distracted to concentrate. <gasps> ah, Professor Wiseman. Hey, guys. Welcome to my new exhibit. It's called How Great Scientists Got Their Great Ideas. These are portraits of some great scientists. Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, Marie Curie. And Albert Einstein. Once you think like a scientist, George, you can solve almost any problem. Huh? George had a problem. He wanted cannoli. <laughs> you know, scientists think about problems and get ideas to solve them. They observe, then collect information. <laughs> and if that information doesn't help solve their problem, they observe more and get a different idea. <gasps> oh, dear. Excuse me. Young man, get down from there. George wondered what great scientists would do if they were monkeys who had no cannoli because Gnocchi had scratched the booths. I say, do we know for certain that she did it like the chef believes? You must think about what you observed. George did see Gnocchi scratch the door, but could she have scratched the booth too? To observe does not support the chef's idea about Gnocchi making the scratches. If George could prove Gnocchi was innocent, Chef Pischetti would be happy, and George would have cannoli. <laughs> oh, I love cannoli! George had to observe more. It had been a particularly rewarding day at the going out of business store. George couldn't imagine how this day could get any better. Or maybe it could. Mabel's department store had added a fresh homemade candy counter. Oh, I don't know about you, but I simply can't walk away from blue candy. <laughs> But I can't carry this into Mabel's. Ooh. 
the pyramid sort of enhances the pinkness, don't you think? Hmm. I'm working on a rhombus shape, but it keeps falling over. A rhombus? It's a work in progress. Anyway, welcome to Kaylee's Candies. I'm Kaylee. We'd like four small boxes. Great! This is my first order today. No one could wait till they got home to try the chocolates. George's box has four, not six. You got shortchanged. He can have two of mine. I just wanted to taste anyway. So can I have your other three? <laughs> George didn't think it was fair for anyone to sacrifice. <laughs> there was only one right thing to do. Uh, oh, nuts. Oh, you want to buy two more? <laughs> You're missing two. <laughs> How do I know you didn't eat them? <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly haven't eaten any chocolate. Boy, you sure have nice teeth. <laughs> Pick any two you want. Sorry I shortchanged you. I put some of these boxes together at home and my cat distracts me. <laughs> oh dear. I need to pick up more stock, but I can't just leave. Hey, would you mind watching the counter? <laughs> You're obviously extremely honest. And I've hardly had any business all day. All you have to do is watch the chocolates while I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you so much. The Mysterious Rhombus. George wondered if he could make a rhombus. It didn't seem hard. <laughs> Why did other shapes stack better? <laughs> Maybe they went together by shape, not color. George concentrated on his work. George hadn't expected any customers. I want a box of chocolates for my wife. Do you have mints? Are these mints? Well, what are those? Uh, that doesn't look like a mint. The next blue one had the same filling and it still wasn't mint. Well, don't you have a flavor chart? <laughs> George always liked helping in the Pischetti's green, beautiful garden. Uh, we need more tomatoes, uh, more eggplant, uh, more everything. Natty, we must expand our garden. I have a drawn up a plan. New hoses, fresh topsoil, more plants! <laughs> but, Chef, where will we expand to? The reason George liked their garden so much was that it was right in the middle of the city. Hey, the reason you need more veggies is that you use so many to experiment. I must experiment! How else can I perfect my recipe for the perfect Giardino burger? I thought those two were great. Well, they were. <laughs> but only great, not perfect. 
The firehouse picnic is in one hour. Can you get it perfect in one hour? I must, for I am Biscetti! So, what's gonna make this perfect? Onion, garlic, uh, onion. No, 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 garlic. Onion? Okay, let's try it. Giorgio, you have helped me find the perfect mixture. Oh. <laughs> These are my recipes. I write down how I make my food, so I can make it the same way every time. Happy with the recipe, Chef Pischetti grilled a test burger. Wait, I left out the pepper. Where is my grinder? Netty, come here! Tell me what you think of this. Be honest. All of my Giardino burger ingredients came from our garden, Giorgio. Taste it, taste it! Mmm, <laughs> see, this is perfect. <laughs> you're, you're not just making those yummy sounds to be nice, right? I'm your wife and he's a monkey. If we are not honest, who is? <laughs> so, Chef Pischetti quickly made enough burger patties for the firefighters' picnic. Please put this on the back of my truck while I get my grill ready. George put the box on the truck right outside the restaurant. <laughs> but he didn't know there were two trucks out there. <laughs> Hi! Hey! <laughs> Look at this monkey waving at me. Monkeys are so friendly. <laughs> Oh, Nettie, if everyone does not love those Giardino burgers, I will never cook again. Even if they don't, you have a book full of other great recipes. I don't care. If anything at all goes wrong, I'm gonna hang up my big white head forever. Please relax. They will love them. George couldn't tell him something went wrong. <gasps> and maybe he didn't have to. If that book showed the chef how to make the burgers, George could use it too, and make burgers that would be exactly the same. The ingredients came from the garden. Here were pictures of things from the garden, so he had obviously found the right recipe. So George headed home with one dozen donuts, and everything was perfect. while I'm gone, Hundley. George realized he couldn't go home because then those donut people would know where he lived. <laughs> Woo! We're right behind you! <laughs> so, in the end, George headed home with one dozen donuts. There's no monkey on that dog. <laughs> monkey! We lost him. <laughs> Do 
on, man. <laughs> Hunley saw them outside and barked. Somehow, he knew they were looking for you. He's so smart. Relax, Monkey Donuts are here. Phew, everything's okay. Mmm, uh -oh. <laughs> 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 mm, wow, those smell so good. I'm sorry I didn't ask you to buy more than one dozen. <laughs> You look hungry, George. I'll make eggs, then it's donut time. It's a little dark in here. I'll open some curtains. So, anything exciting happened today, George? I passed by the D family. They look pretty happy. So what do you want, scrambled? How about fried? Hmm, I never realized how nicely insulated this handle is. Oh, careful. Hey, wait a minute. I don't remember buying this car. <laughs> Did you put that donut there? <laughs> oh, what a waste of food. Now we only have 11 to eat. Here's the... Say, where'd they all go? A... Uh, what? A hundred dozen donuts. A hundred do... We have one dozen donuts? Look. <laughs> well, Miss Donuts asked me to give you the bill. Wow, what a mistake. How could they think you bought a hundred dozen don't... What? How did... Oh... Why, George? <laughs> well, at least I know you were paying attention. We've got to put these donuts in bags or something. <laughs> What are we going to do with them all? <laughs> so in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? George had three great-looking boats. But just looking boaty didn't make them float. <laughs> At last, George had something he knew would float. Bill wasn't going to win any contest with a tiny board. <laughs> no! <laughs> and this is what he had to work with. <laughs> Maybe it was time to study boats in action. Wide boats seem to work well. <laughs> Steam coming out. A propeller. <laughs> and a good solid bottom. Okay, a wide boat with steam coming out and a propeller. Hmm. All done! I'm 
just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? Huh? Woo! <laughs> 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 Paper delivery is an exact business. People expect it at the same time every day. <laughs> Thanks for watching my boat. Where is my boat? George! You built this yourself? <laughs> wow. I thought city kids just bought everything. Where'd you say my boat was? George? <laughs> I forgot to close the windows! Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Come on, let's go enter. Hey, you gotta bring your boat to enter it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Who else has a boat like that? Let's hear it for our winners! <laughs> Congratulations, George. I, I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. <laughs> There's nothing an inquisitive monkey likes more than discovering new things. <laughs> and the museum's a great place for discoveries. Like how different something can seem when you look at just a small part of it. <laughs> Hi, George. Ooh. You're getting a close look at our dinosaur exhibit, I see. <laughs> then you'll be interested in this. This newly discovered Stegosaurus skeleton is our next exhibit. <laughs> Discovering dinosaur bones look like the best job in the world. Ooh. The museum always gave George lots to think about. <coughs> Unlike Charky, who only ever thought about one thing. Playing. discovered a bone. That magnifying glass would have come in handy, but Charky was probably blocks away by now.
George couldn't let Charky chew on it. What if some dinosaur lost this bone on its way to the museum? Stegosaurus had all his bones. So did the Triceratops. And the Tyrannosaurus. If a dinosaur hadn't lost it, what kind of bone could it be? Luckily, there was always a box of Hunley's treats in the lobby. was helping get ready for breakfast while the man with the yellow hat got an early jump on some important work. <sighs> this country air is just what I needed. Yeah, by tonight, my speech for the tribute to Professor Wiseman will be perfect. <laughs> uh, her great vision. <laughs> oh, um, her great insight exhibit, right? Uh, uh, algae. <laughs> Woolly Mammoth, her love of the woolly mammoth. <laughs> hmm, I don't... Oh, uh, yeah, oh, okay, okay, I'll stop for breakfast. <laughs> well, fruit and eggs are good. These cupboards are too small for us. Maybe we should buy less food. The thought of having less food made George more hungry. Well, we still need breakfast. Hey, I'll run to the market. Maybe you can finish my speech for me while I'm gone. out with extra nuts. <laughs> He's storing food. Squirrels hide food in the ground. Then when they need it, they dig it up and have plenty to eat. George never knew the ground was such a good place to store food. George and the man with the yellow hat needed a good place to store food.
George could hardly wait to chew the rewards of squirrel-style storage. <laughs> mm. Mm. George, these donuts are delicious! <laughs> George, this fish is phenomenal. Yeah. All right, now for breakfast, then back to work on my speech. <laughs> Where's our food? George, I think there's a food thief on the loose. Why would someone steal paprika? <laughs> George wanted to explain that he had it all taken care of. <laughs> Do we have gophers? <laughs> gophers stole our food? <laughs> <laughs> My paprika! Why would someone bury paprika? Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hunley always led people through the lobby, so he used his skills to lead George around obstacles. There was more to monkey sitting George than guiding him around the furniture. Hunley cleaned up after him too, which had its rewards. He also helped with those itches that George couldn't reach. Every day, George's chair driving improved, and Hunley looked forward to coming over. Good morning to you too, Hunley. And then, something changed. <laughs> Remember, use the crutches, don't step on your cast, and be a good little monkey, uh, and dachshund. They taught George to use the crutches in the hospital. But he needed practice. Pretty soon, George was as good on crutches as he was on his own feet. And as soon as he got really good, Good news, Hunley. George is allowed to walk on his cast now. George showed Hunley how his leg was healing. But dachshunds don't read x-rays. Hunley didn't like to get too far from his lobby. But George wanted to go for a walk. He also wanted to go for a climb. But that wasn't allowed. Hunley was one serious monkey sitter. They went to the park every day. George drew some good pictures. And Hunley discovered he liked lying on grass and taking slow strolls with a monkey. See? The break's all healed. <laughs> well, hello. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> George was thrilled to be completely free again. <laughs> Normal, I see. Good as new. Thanks for all of your help, Huntley. <laughs> Guess you're back on lobby duty with me, boy. George wanted Huntley to come with him. But Huntley had a job to do. George brought his friends back so he and Hunley could be together. George was back to normal, all right.